Hey guys, I'm Kelsey and I'm here doing Tutorial Tuesday with Clay King and I'm going to be talking about um, Speedball and showing you a little bit of my process when using Speedball in the studio on my sculptures. I've been using it for a couple years now on my pieces, mostly because of, um, well, first of all, approachability of the company is, is just stellar. Everyone that works there is kind of amazing. And also product, I really like to water the colors down to get more of a watercolor consistency and Speedball really like smooths down and you can get either like a really pastel effect or you can bulk it up and get a really vibrant coat on your piece and switching between the two is really cool and getting that nice soft um, transition from pastel to intensity is really nice on sculpture. Um, I'm going to show you in 10 minutes the process um, that it took to underglaze this piece which in reality in real time in the studio was about six hours so it's gonna move quickly um, but it's, it's fun to show um, how awesome these, these products are and how these colors go together, um, and I'll, uh, I'll walk you through it. I'm going to start by building a thick layer of white on the dress, and this is um, kind of just a, a hearty layer that I can begin to work my shadows into on the clothing. I'm adding a lot of water to most of these layers, so this is just a really um, saturated, mix of green and black and it's going to begin to kind of fold into these creases and create a little more depth. I am switching my brush between white and shadow to kind of fade out from those deeper areas to those high points and keep my dress white so it doesn't go completely gray. Adding some yellow to my house. Yellow from Speedball is really fun because it's a more transparent Undergla or underglaze, so um, you can play with what you put underneath it. So after this first layer of yellow, I'm just going to add some of my green-black shadow into these places between the boards here. And then when I do my next layer of yellow, since it's transparent, you'll be able to see that shading beneath the house layer, and it starts to do really cool stuff with the surface. So my next layer is kind of orange and yellow. I'm going to kind of warm up the house boards a little bit. Gonna work in some brown for my roof, a little bit of pine and red here, and again a thick layer I can shade and play with later. Instant brown, I'm gonna add a little bit of black, kind of deepen our color a bit. Gonna apply that to the house, and I did add a little bit of black shading, if you could see it a bit on the roof, um, into my uh, little thatches before I'm adding my brown. Working a little bit of the rooftop brown into the house is going to create kind of one piece out of the whole unit. And this is something I'll do with the rest of the piece as well, like pulling some of that yellow down into the dress. This can kind of create a reflection of the yellow onto the white. And I'm going to do a little bit of rooftop brown in there as well, kind of deepening my shadows too lots of water in my brush on this so it's just kind of a subtle addition of brown. I'm gonna make my brush into kind of a hard edge pushing it here with some water and some blue. Blue is one of the powerhouse colors that Speedball has. It is blue. So adding a little bit here is gonna really push those creases deeper. First I'm laying down the color, rinsing off my brush and coming back with just water and kind of feathering it into the folds of the dress. That way there's no hard lines. I want it to be very soft, very flowy fabric. A little bit of black. Make a blade with my brush again. Kind of the final depth here. It's just the black coming in. Making my lines, washing my brush and then coming back in and softening those edges. I'm going to pull it down into the rest of the dress too and create softer wrinkles towards the bottom. I want to bring the white back in my dress, so here's a dry brush and I'm going to feather some white underglaze back over my highlights. I really want this dress to be starchy white, so it's important to come back in and kind of make sure that's the overwhelming color. I'm just going to hit these edges and then draw it down in softly. All right, I'm gonna get a little house brown, lighten it up and warm it up a little with the yellow. 
and start mapping out the fur of my rabbit. And I do want little white eye sockets and little white cheekies, so I'm just going to kind of figure out where those go. And these are really watery layers for this first bit, just to make sure the whole thing is covered before coming in and establishing my highs and lows, which I'm just going to do by having more underglaze in the brush and less water. And these layers repeat themselves over and over and over, depending on how deep I want my piece to be. Coming in with a little blue now, creating my harder lines, get a little expression in the eyebrow and the cheeks. Now I'm going to speed up the process of an eye, starting with the tear duct, so working some red down into our little points here. This little bit of brown is just our rabbit fur brown, and it's going to establish where the iris is going to go. So I'm going to work it around into a circle, and underglaze being forgiving, if you mess up, because eyes are really hard, uh, you just kind of wipe it away, and trust me, I wipe away more eyes than I send to the kiln. All right, coming in with a little corner of black on my brush. This is just going to make a little bit of depth on the iris, so I'm going to go all the way around. And there is um, water in my brush, so it's softening the black into more of a wash. Trace the lines, create a little shadow. And I'm going to come back in with my brown and fade the brown back in from the center. Now this is most black, um, no water, just so I can get a more controlled, hard line. And I'm going to trace in where the pupil is. And with the eyes that I do, I feel like uh, the softer and less descript I am, the more readable and gentle it is of an eye. Sometimes if your pupil is really sharp, it's, it's really intense. So I'm going to fade my pupil out at the top. Coming back in with a little more of a reddish brown, so I kind of stirred in some brown and red. And that's just to bring a pop of highlight back into the eye. Alright, so now we're going to make some shoe color in my OCD Nightmare paint tray here. Um, adding some black to red creates this really cool uh, maroon color. And I think I want a little more of a, a purpley maroon, so I am going to push it with a little bit of um, blue just to kind of pop that coolness a little more. Um, brown is going to help tone it down a little bit, blue is going to push it to that purple edge, and red so vibrant it's going to really give us a pretty maroon. And let's do some high tops, so we'll leave this front white and get our maroon colored in there. Some starchy white toes. And I like my shoes to be more gestural, so we'll just kind of put these laces in crisscross style here and keep it simple. Now for my flesh tone, um, I do mix up a little pot of um, underglaze pre, so it's just ready to go. Um, and I'm using a ton of water, so I keep it hydrated. I'm filling my brush, brush bristles with water. Um, so when I apply it, it's building in these really, really slow layers of color, and I can decide which areas are lighter in which areas are just um, kind of a heavier flesh color. Um, and a little pot like that will last me a year, which is crazy, um, just because so little is going on. I'm using a, a B-Mix clay body, so the clay does speak a lot for itself in terms of the skin tone that I've chosen for this piece. Add this on, and then I will um, wake the skin up with a little bit of a blush, so a super watered down red, and just kind of hitting the areas where I want a little bit of, of tone, so hands here. And then I'm going to hit the knees. This is the most watercolory part for me, just kind of letting it pool in places and be darker at the bottom. As my brush loses water, I can feather the red in softly. I'm going to take it up the thigh here, and then we'll come down to the sock a bit. And then just layers of wash to create some depth in the flesh. And this piece is good. Thank you so much for watching, guys.